Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the Kali Audio INUNF Studio Monitoring System. Okay, so this is not the Kali Audio. This is the Sound Blaster X. And this has been my sound system for my studio, PC, gaming, everything uh, for, uh, for a while now. Uh, originally, I had bigger bookshelves by JBL, the Studio uh, Series 5, the 530s. But they were a bit too big uh, when I got uh, a triple 32-inch monitor, which I will be showing a little bit later. Uh, they were blocking the audio from the speaker, so I had to come up with a different system. And I tried a couple of the Razer ones, and I didn't like them. I tried uh, JBL, um, the, the Logitech ones, I didn't like them either. And this was the best that I could find. But it's not great. I mean, these tiny speakers, the drivers here, they cannot work miracles, you know, physics. And so it has a small subwoofer that goes on the floor, of course, and it helps, but it has to work so hard to compensate for the lack of size of these drivers that it just struggles to give you the quality that I wanted. Um, on my main system is downstairs, is my home theater system. I have like big JBL 5 series uh, towers, which are like 590s. And it's everything with amplifiers and all that. And it's a pretty decent system, so I'm pretty used to that. So every time I'll come to my computer system, I'll struggle a little bit with the quality that I was getting. But, you know, I, I was using it mostly for YouTube, I suppose, uh, podcasts and things like that. And I wasn't listening to a lot of music, mainly because it didn't sound that good. So uh, I decided to maybe try to step it up. And I saw BNH that was having this Kali audio thing, and I never heard of it before. So I was like, that sounds like something that I could use. So I talked to my good friend Abe at BNH and sent me the loaner. And I have it now, so let's take a look at it. Here we have it. This is the Kali Audio INUNF. Tip for Kali, maybe it come up with a different name, something like Rolsoff or Kachi, INUNF, I don't know. Sounds like radio bands or something like that. Anyways, nice looking unit. Pretty beefy, actually. Pretty heavy. I mean, not huge, but pretty heavy, so you can tell that it's well built. On each side, it has 4.5 woofers, which are the ones that take care of the bass, which is great. It actually performs really nice. And then these are the main speakers, these very nice speakers. And it comes with this stand, which basically allows you to rotate it and pinpoint it exactly to your ears. Now, these are very near field uh, speakers, so you want them to be about arm length from you, like probably two. Uh, two, two and a half feet or something like that. But yeah, about an arm's length is where it works the best. And uh, these are four inch mid range drivers. And in the center, it has a one inch tweeter because this is a co actual, co -actual uh, design of speaker, which is fantastic. So it means that the driver is inside the other, basically. And these are the two babies. As you can see, these are much bigger than the ones on on the Sound Blaster and on the Razer um, sound, um, sound bars. And the sound definitely, you can tell the difference in quality right away. Now this unit, you can have it either this way. This is one of the positions that you can have it. You can even put a monitor on top of it. And the other way is like this, but not this way. In reality, it will be facing you. So this is how it will be if you wanted to have it vertically. This is how it will look that way to you. Now, I like the unit. It looks nice. The only thing I wish was the opposite, that I could have the other part facing me because for, for some reason I like the design. And because this has rubber here for when you have it horizontally, my only concern is like if you put it horizontally and move it around and maybe you get the some scratches or whatever, this won't look as nice. So I wish there was a way to remove this and just put a cover on it or something like if you want to have it vertically, then you have something to cover this rubber. Nick picking, just a small thing, but overall the design is very nice in my opinion. And then this lights out in blue around here. Uh, you do have the option to disable the blue if you don't want it. And I'll show you how to so uh, shortly. 
Now, let me uh, clarify one thing. If you're expecting some audio samples, how this compares to the sound, uh, sound blaster, it's not going to happen because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's so many variables. The microphone that I use to record it is not going to be able to capture the differences, right? Because it's not designed for this. The speakers that you're using, the headphones, whatever you're using to play this back is going to affect the quality of the sound. So for me to show you how they compare, it, it doesn't really give you anything valuable. I, I'd rather have you try it out and you know, get it from B&H or some place that has a good return policy, test it, and then if you don't like it, you can always send it back. Not, nothing to lose, but I don't want to present some samples that are not going to be realistic and give you false ideas of how they compare. I don't think that'll be fair for either product. So that's the only reason I am not going to do it. So if you're waiting for that, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. So anyways, going back to the actual product, well, nothing to see much in the front. So let's turn to this side and hopefully the camera will see because the camera is pretty far, but well, I don't know. If I figure out how to do a close up in, in Premiere, I'll do it. But anyways, here you have the speaker input and the power switch. I'll probably just do some B-roll to make it easier. And then here is the volume control. Pretty simple, and you can see the speaker in there, the woofers. On the other side, it gets more interesting because you have the inputs for uh, USB-C. You can connect to the computer, of course. You have optical. And then you have a 3.5 millimeter one, and then you have a couple of quarter inch connectors as well. So quite, quite a few connectors there. Now there's no app or anything. Everything on this is controlled by this dip switches here. Now, if you forget what they do, there's a, a barcode there that you can scan and it will take you to the manual and tell you what exactly it of the switches do. But basically some are to, depending if you're close to the wall, then you can put a switch to eliminate some of that boundary reinforcement. You're far from the wall, a different, different switch to boost the bass a little bit. Uh, you have switches that allow you to boot, boost the bass 2 dB, 4 dB, some for mid range, some for uh, high. So you can tweak the sound the way you like. That's perfect. There's a the switch that I think is number seven or eight that allows you to switch up the blue LED that is in the front, which is how I would do it because I run a full RGB rainbow in my computer synchronized. And so I don't want a different color on, on one of the units that is kind of like not match with whatever I'm playing on the, on the other RGB. But that's uh, pretty much the two options. Uh, how it works is it like this or horizontally. I asked them if it was possible to put it on the floor and they said you could try it, but it's not recommended. I haven't tried it, but I still kind of want to try it because when I play some music, I mostly hear like bass coming from this. So I'm not sure how much impact it's going to have on the rest of the audio spectrum. But since this is designed for like mixing and, and near field, it, the quality and, and um, how accurate it is, it's very important to them. That's why they want to make sure that you get the best out of it. So that's why they have a switch to put it horizontally and one when it's vertically. So you can uh, determine the way it is and then switch it to that mode. So you get the best quality. Uh, in terms of uh, audio, this is a fantastic. Uh, as I said, I was always kind of like a bit let down when I would come from my system downstairs to my sound blaster sound bar. And this changed it. And just today, as I was testing it for the review a little bit more, just to get some of the differences more, more fresh in my mind, we just started playing music. My wife kept asking, hey, play this, play that. And, and we just got into it because it sounds really good. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to match my seven by 200 watt amplifier with huge towers, right? Let's be realistic. But the difference is in the quality on the, on the imaging, like the sound bar, it's the drivers are pretty close together. You don't get a big sound, wide sound stage because the drivers are there, right? With this, you can have them far apart. You get that spaciousness that you will want from bookshelves, for example. And that creates more layers of separation. The quality of the drivers allow for imaging to be more precise where the instruments, you can tell where the instruments are supposed to be instead of all like being kind of jumbled in the middle, like it normally happens with, with uh, uh, sound bars. Now, sure, the sound bars have some special effects like you can like expansion of the sound stage and whatnot, but it's never the same. When you hear that real thing, speakers wider apart that can 
project and image and, and create a real sound, uh, sound stage, it's, it's a clear difference. And because these drivers are much bigger than those, you get this extra robust sound like vocals, like male vocals or some some fuller and even female vocals also benefit from it. And the instruments got more impact and the kick drums and all that stuff. You feel like they sound right. They don't sound thin, small, like it will normally sound with tiny drivers. You know, it's, it's all about physics, right? There's so much you can do with small drivers and then the subwoofer that it has on the sound blaster tries to help, but it's not enough. This thing has a really good bass. Now uh, there's not huge drivers either, but it's dual drivers and they have some tight bass and it's very accurate and fast. So I cannot complain. I believe it uh, is rated to 47 or 43 hertz uh, minus 3 dB. Uh, but I was playing, I don't know if that's uh, in room or how it was measured. I have to refresh my memory on that, but all I can tell you is I was listening to songs today and I was having a blast with them. So the bass was there pretty tight and I wasn't looking to try and boost the bass anymore. It was just right. And, and I'm kind of a bass head and I can show you, if you want a tour of my home theater, I will show you my hover EC platform for super rumble subwoofers and triple subwoofers on the back of my sofa. So I am a bass head in a way, but, but this does it for music perfectly fine. So my recommendation is. If you enjoy music a lot and you don't want to be with headphones all the time, like this one, where things I don't like to do is just wear headphones all the time, don't settle for a sound and bar just right away. Like that's the only options that you have. Give something like this a try. If you have the space that you can accommodate it on your, on your, sit on your setup, give it a shot. I mean, the price is very good for the quality that you're getting, in my opinion. And there's nothing to lose. I mean, you can always try it. If you don't like it, send it back and go move on to the next option. But I'll be really surprised if you don't like this because it sounds really, really amazing. You know, for the compactness of it, keeping everything, you know, and uh, on mindset of what we are working on, you know. So, yeah, if you have this, actually, if you have tried it, I would love to get your opinion. So write me a comment there and let me know if you tried it or if you're planning to do it. Let me know as well, because I would love to hear what your opinion, what you're getting. Or if you have any questions, let me know, because this is not going anywhere. I'm already in talks to purchase this and keep it, because I'm very, very happy with it, and I just can't see myself putting the sound bar, the sound blaster back. Even though the sound blaster I liked it more than the Razer ones, it was still not enough. So I'll just put some RGB somewhere around here, like I did with the Sun Blaster, and make it match with the rest of my system. So again, if you take your audio seriously and you don't want to be wearing headphones all the time and you want something that you can fit nicely, go ahead, give it a shot and let me know what you think. I'm going to go ahead and try this on the, on the floor just for fun and see if I like it. And if I do, I'll put a comment on the description that uh, my experience with this on the floor. I know the controllers are on the floor, so it'll be a bit awkward. So that's one of the reasons probably they don't want to do it. There's no remote. It's just everything is in here. But that's it. I'm very happy with this. I'm very happy that I got the loaner so I could experience it. And now I'm just going to set it up on my system very nicely and enjoy. Pretty awesome sound system again instead of like tiny speakers. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.